Yeah, it's too early. I got work to do. Hey, how come is it I always get the hardware to carry and you get the light stuff? Oh, brother, I figure you need the exercise. After all, you got a little weight problem. The only weight problem I got right now is in my two hands. <laughs> Morning, horse. Joe. Hey, how you doing? Morning, Bill. How's it going? Well, all right, I guess. Sure be glad when Sheriff Coffey gets back from St. Louis. Been nothing but trouble since he left here. See what I mean? What this town's coming to. Yeah, I heard it's getting sort of wild. Wild? I haven't had a decent night's sleep in two weeks. You need any help, Bill? No, that's what I'm getting paid for. Forty a month and meals. See you, boys. Hey, you think you ought to go on and give him a hand anyway? Uh, Bill knows what he's doing. If he needs some help, he'll call us. Come on, let's get the rest of that hardware. I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah, right between the eyes. <laughs> won't give us a drink, huh? <laughs> then you won't be needing these gloves. <laughs> and they won't be needing these head either, right? <laughs> Even the squirt is squirt here for not giving us any drink. Huh? Yeah. They, they already had more than they could handle when nah. they came in. <laughs> well, you're going to cool your heels in jail a while. You're under arrest, Dave. The rest of you fellows, give them your break. Hightail on out of here. Now, what do you have to say about it, hmm? Yeah, old Depp. Why don't you wake up and we'll talk it all over, huh? Dave. He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? Hey, Depp. Hey, get up. Get up! See? You all alone? Where's everybody? Well, Deputy Hacker, he took uh, Haas and little Joe. They rode out about an hour ago trying to pick up the kid's trail. They got me from the stable to guard a prisoner here. Uh, listen, uh, uh, would you like to see him? Yeah. You know, I've seen quiet one, but this boy takes the prize. Hello, young fellow. Uh, I'm Ben Cartwright, and this is Mayor Garrett. We'd uh, like to talk to you for a minute. You better tell us where the rest of those boys are hiding. Amos, leave me alone with him for a bit, will you? Cliff. You realize how much of a pickle you're in. You and your friends killed a man. You put an end to a human life. 
How do you think I feel, Mr. Cartwright? I ain't been able to think of anything else since. What about your friends? Think of them. How do they feel? Hunted like animals. What do you want from me? Why are you here anyway? I'd like you to tell me where your friends are. Now, look, I, I know that Dave Morrissey and Chuck Wilson are implicated with you. There were two other fellas. Where are they? I ain't telling you nothing, so get out of here and leave me alone. I'm told that you haven't any parents. Is that right? Sure, I'd like to help you. How, by turning me into a yellow-bellied tattletale? By getting me to sell out my friends? No, I'm not trying to get you to sell out your friends. I'm trying to get you to help your friends. Look at me. Look at me, Cliff. Now, I know that you fellas didn't deliberately go out to murder a man. I know that only one fella struck that blow. Well, the bartender told us that. So, uh, if you would tell us where the other fellas are, we, we could bring them in and... I could promise you a fair trial. Leave me alone. Now, Cliff. Leave me alone. I ain't gonna tell you anything. I ain't gonna tell anybody anything. What's happened? Who's been shot? Hurry up and get the doctor. <sighs> Sit him down there. I'll get his leg up. Ben, come quick. Easy. Looks like it's broke, bike. Sent Hoss for the doc. What happened? Now Tom tried to talk those kids out of the rocks at Crown Canyon. They shot them and then scattered like a bunch of quail. I think I winged one of them, Ben. Them dang fool kids. Whenever you put on a badge, some young whippersnapper is bound to try and put a bullet in you. He's going to be out of commission for a while. Well, that does it. Beatings, robberies, hurrahing the town, and now this. Ben, I'm calling an emergency session to the city council, and I want you to be there. With Roy Coffey away, we need a new peace officer in this town, and I mean right now. The shooting of Deputy Hacker and the death of Deputy Harris dramatically demonstrate our problem. And so I say, if the only thing that sweeps clean is a new broom, then let us get that new broom and get it fast. And with Roy Coffey bogged down in St. Louis until that murder trial is over, Virginia City is in desperate need of a new law enforcement, the kind of law officer who can not only maintain order, but restore order. Now I'm talking about lawmen like Bear River Tom Smitty, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wyatt Earp. I have just such a man in mind. And in exercising my power of office, I wired him to come to Virginia City to accept the post of sheriff. Well, who do you have in mind, Amos? You'll see his name on this message of acceptance. West Dunn. West Dunn, gentlemen. One of the great lawmen of the West. A man whose reputation for cleaning up bad towns has made him a living legend. I'm convinced he's the man we need. Hey, let's take a look at this. It says, West Dunn, the Beau Saber of the West, the dauntless lawman. The Beau what? Beau Saber. French phrase, means a perfect swordsman. <laughs> a little melodramatic, but makes a good story. Hey, look over here. Look at this. Picture of West Dunn with Wild Bill Hickok. Take a look at this, Pa. Hmm? It said, these two men single-handedly cleared the trails from Dodge City to Abilene. Look at that. Hey, pause. Is this West Dunn really that tough? Well, that's, uh, that's what they say. <laughs> we'll find out when he gets here. Well, I'm kind of anxious to meet him. I think Mayor Garrett's right. I think this is the kind of man we need around town. He's tough, aggressive. He shoots first and asks questions later. That's a strange way for you to be talking. Now, what's so strange about it? Tom Hacker and Bill Harris were friends of yours, weren't they? Well, of course, but... Well, what happened was regrettable, but you don't change a whole method of law enforcement because of one incident. Well, they tried to talk to the Morrissey bunch. Where'd it get them? Well, Joe, you... That's the risk they took when they decided to become peace officers. Well, for $40 a month in meals, I don't think they ought to have to take that risk. Well, they don't have to take it. They decided to. Well, I think they made the wrong decision then. He's pretty riled up, ain't he? Yeah, well... The whole town's riled up. Yeah. Paul, what's, what's this West Dunn gonna do about it? I don't know. It's going to be something. According to this, he's the toughest peace officer in the country. I so solemnly swear.
Congratulations, Sheriff. How about a few words from our new sheriff, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not much for words, gentlemen. But I will tell you this. I came here to do a job, and to do it right, I must have the power. I will brook no interference, tolerate no undue criticism. I will do things my way, at my own pace, on my own grounds. The law is the law and will be upheld. I hope this is clear to everyone. Well, that's, that's well said, Sheriff. Uh, I think we've got ourselves a real lawman in Virginia City. <laughs> and I'm afraid I'm not much for ceremonies either, gentlemen. So I know you'll excuse me. I've got a lot to get started on. Oh, uh, uh, Sheriff Dunn, I'd like to have you meet one of our most distinguished citizens, Mr. Ben Cartwright, owner of the Ponderosa Ranch. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, we've heard a great deal about you, too, Sheriff Dunn. Uh, my son, Hoss, my son, Joseph. Yeah, I reckon we know about everything we just know about you, Sheriff. Little Joe must have read a half hundred books about you. <laughs> Is he really? Yeah. yeah, well, sort of. I, I used to think about being a peace officer. Well, I'd better get some peace officer and done myself and start earning my keep around here. Well, we'll get out of your way. Congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. Bye, fellas. Bye, long, Mayor. So long, Mayor. Now, first things first, Mr. Mayor. I'll want a curfew for 9 o'clock, beginning tonight. Curfew? That's what I'll need if you want me to do the job right. I want the riffraff off the streets and the citizens in their homes where they can't get hurt. Don't you think a curfew is a bit extreme? I mean, it's, it's not good for business. Extreme times call for extreme measures. I want that curfew, Mayor. Very well, Sheriff. I'll have an immediate resolution drawn up for review by the council. Mr. Mayor, as soon as I'm provisioned and ready, I'm going out to bring in the boys that killed your deputy. I won't have time to sit around while the council scratches its head. I want you to start exercising your mayoral powers and start backing me up. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, you heard. I'm the new law here. Now come on over here where I can talk to you, fella. I ain't got nothing to tell you. <laughs> now, I haven't got time to waste. I want the names of your friends. I want to know just where I can find them. All right. Do it any way you like.
that burn little critter's cut itself. You never saw me. Just get out of here. Chuck, I did see you. I saw you real good. Now, buddy, you're hurt. Come on. No, please, Hoss. You know me. I never meant to hurt anybody. Chuck, the only one you're hurting yourself now. Come on. Don't, Hoss. I ain't gonna go back there. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. I don't think you're going to. mean to uh hey horse horse Hey, Kevin, he's strong, Ben. Same wound in a weaker man, he wouldn't have any chance at all. I want you to stay with him. The great danger now is from hemorrhaging. You'll be back in the morning, won't you? First thing. Take care of him now. Night, Ben. Little Joe. Night. I'm going to light the fire. I'm, I'm going to stay with Hoss. Right. Mr. Godright? Sorry if I startled you. I found the door open. I heard in town about your son. I rode out, thought maybe I could talk to him. I'm afraid you won't be able to. He's unconscious. I'm sorry to hear that. I better get to him. Mr. Cartwright. Maybe I can cheer you up a bit anyway. I think it was one of the Morrissey bunch that shot your son. Well, I caught up with one of them, punk named Fred Roberts. You know him? Yes, I... He's the son of some old friends. I caught up with him at his mother's place. The fool tried to shoot it out with me. He lost. Are you saying he's dead? That's right. Oh, when your son regains consciousness, you'll let me know, won't you? Mr. Dunn. You sure that's a Morrissey bunch, huh? Pretty sure. I found some bloodstains leading away from where your brother was shot, so I guess Deputy Hacker was right. He must have clipped one of them. Well, I've got work to do. I'm going with you. No, I don't think so. Why not? You want him too badly. You're liable to go off half-cocked. I can't take that chance. You're darn right I want him badly, mister. I got a brother lying upstairs with a bullet in him. I'm not going to sit around here and wait for the man who shot him to get away. Now, either I go with you or without you. It doesn't make any difference to me. You make up your mind. Get a rifle. I'll see you outside. Joe, I want you to get some help. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going with West End. I don't want you to go. But I'm not going to argue with you about this. I said I don't want you to go. Look, when my brother Hoss wakes up, what do you think it's going to mean more to him? Seeing me sitting by his bedside, I know when I'm going out to find the man that bushwhacked him. Cartwright, you coming? We haven't got any time to waste. Joe. Yeah, Pa.
do you feel, son? A little bit woozy. Funny dream. I dreamed it. It was this woman. Long golden hair like the color wheat gets just before harvest. This pretty lady came to me while I, I was beside the stream or river or something. She told me a story about the Vikings. She said that a Viking, when he died, was put on a ship and they just let him drift out to sea. How could you know? He was so small. Where's little Joe? He's, uh, he's with West Dunn. They're trying to find the... I thought that ambushed you. Uh, no, I wasn't ambushed. It was just old Chuck. If I hadn't have tried to take his gun away from him, I wouldn't be in the shape of men right now. You get some sleep. Rest is the best thing for you, son. I can have me s some more of that dream about them Vikings. I just. Put on them ships and let them drift out to sea. Cutright, you stay here. I'll go on in alone. I didn't come all this way to be left behind. Look, Cutright, I brought you along so I'd have a gun in back of me. Not in front of me, not to the side of me, but in back of me. There's a side entrance there. Cover it, huh? All right, you're in charge. For his gun. Which one was he? It was Paul Curtis. We'll send somebody back to pick him up. We still got work to do. sitting there all night. He needs to sleep, Doc. How you feeling, Hoss? Well, I ain't gonna wrestle no bears this morning, but I am hungry. That's a good sign. Let's take a look at that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, now, huh. Am I gonna live? Not over 60 or 70 more years. Providing you keep out of the way of any more bullets thrown in your direction. Haas, you've got the constitution of a bull elephant. It's amazing. 
What's the matter? What's the matter? Your son. He's hungry. That's good. What do you feel like having? Make it something light. Yeah, something light like a T-bone steak about yay long, about yay Like thick. chicken broth. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have Hop Singh rustle something up. Oh, Ben. It was quite a stir in town this morning. West Dunn and Little Joe brought in another member of that bunch that killed Deputy Harris. Young Paul Curtis. Dunn killed him in a gunfight. What about Little Joe? Oh, he wasn't involved. Looks like Dunn's setting himself up as judge, jury, and executioner, doesn't it? Sure does, doesn't it? Ben, I, I heard about Hoss. How is he? He's going to be all right. Come on in. Thank goodness. My prayers have been answered. I, I fixed him a little something. Thank you. You'll enjoy that. Twist it up. Ben, I... I had a selfish reason for coming here. some money. Anything I can do for you, you know that. We've been neighbors for a long time and friends. First my husband. Now my son. It's been too much. I want to go to my sister in Ohio. I can understand how you feel. No, you don't, Ben. You don't know how I feel. When Freddie came home that night, he threw himself into my arms. He was crying like he was a, a little boy again. He told me how sorry he was and how afraid. We talked. For a long time, I finally convinced him that he should give himself up. And then we heard that voice. Duns. Ordering him out of the house. If Fred had agreed to give himself up, why did he try to shoot it out with Sheriff Dunn? But he didn't, Ben! Dunn shot him down as soon as he opened the door! He never even gave Freddy a chance to give himself up! The horse is fed and watered. They're outside. Why don't you go to the hotel and get some sleep? You've had a long night. I couldn't sleep anyway. I keep thinking about Paul Curtis. Listen, boy. Don't you waste your time worrying about it. That scum got just what he deserved. Look, Cartwright. You've got to understand criminals. Well, they look like us and talk like us. But they aren't, not by a long shot. They're a different breed altogether. Their minds work different, more like animals than humans. Now, when you deal with them like I do, you learn in a hurry. No quarter asked, I'm given. Either you kill them or they kill you. It's as simple as that. I know these kids are not hardened criminals. They did was wrong, but they got scared. I just wish they could have had another chance, that's all. Did they give Harris a chance? Deputy Hacker? Your brother? Joe.
Once, I made a mistake. I was deputy to a marshal named Ned Patterson. I was new to the job. Ned Patterson was the best lawman I ever knew. I loved that old man. Well, one night, I, I picked up this kid who was drunk and raising cane in town. You know that kid? He, he broke down. He cried. I, I let him go. I felt sorry for him. Next night, that same kid shot Patterson in the back, killed him. I never forgot that mistake. Oh, would you mind taking that food into the prisoner, Joe? Cliff, brought you breakfast. Hey, Cliff? Just put it on the floor, Joe. Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick or something? He tried to escape. Jump me when I come in to question him. Ain't that right, boy? Yes. I, I tried to jump. I'm going out for a little while. When I get back, we've got work to do. Hey, you know, you really ought to try to eat something. Make you feel better. This beef stew's not the... Cliff, your face. I'll get you a doctor. Joe, so listen to me. I got something I want to tell you. That guy, that sheriff, he's he's out to kill all of us. He ain't human. Joe, I, I know what we did was wrong. We ran because we were scared. And I'm I'm ready to face any punishment I deserve, even hanging. But it ain't right. Just killing us, is it? No, Cliff, it ain't right. The only reason I'm still alive is because he thinks I know where Chuck and Dave are hiding. Do you know where they are? I think so. But I wouldn't tell him no matter how much he beat me. I told him where Fred Roberts and Paul Curtis were. I killed them. Joe, listen to me. I, I want to tell you. Maybe if I tell you... Chuck and Dave will have a chance. There's a place we used to go to as kids. It's at the north end of a little lake. It's called Basin Lake. You know it? Yeah, I know where it is. Well, at the north end, it's kind of wooded. We always used to talk that if we got in trouble, we'd, we'd meet up there and, and head for Oregon. You think they're still there? We agreed to wait there for four days. If all of us didn't show up, then we'd move on. You take it easy, I'll get you a doc. Joe, find him before he does, promise me. I will. Amos, Mrs. Roberts said he murdered her son. Ben, you only have the word of an hysterical mother. Now, how do you think that's going to stand up in court against a man like Wes Dunn? Well, I think that's up to a jury to decide, isn't it? Look, you can't let him go around using that badge as a license to kill. What do you want me to do? Get rid of him. Get rid of him right now and forever. Turn the whole thing over to the prosecuting attorney. Oh, Joe, what's the matter? Wes Dunn's found out where Dave Morrissey and Chuck are hiding. I think he's gone up there to kill him. Maybe you better get a doctor over the jail. Our Mr. Dunn just about beat Cliff to death. Well, does that satisfy you? Hold it, Jeff. Wait. 
Where are they? Are they coming? No, they're not coming. They're dead. Dead? Fred and Paul. Fred's mother said he tried to give himself up, see? And just as he was coming out the door with his hands in the air, a new sheriff they brought in cut him down right where he was. West Dunn. Y you mean he won't let us give ourselves up? Chuck, that lawman is out to kill us. He's not out to take us in. Now, how's your leg? It's bad, Dave. Well, can you ride? I can try. Well, you better be able to, because we gotta run, and we gotta keep running and running until we get all the way to Oregon. Now, come on. Somebody's coming. Something's got him stirred up. Yeah, is it those two boys or is it West Dunn? There's only one way to find out. That looks like a campsite in there. catch up with them here. Hey, Pot Tracks. One of them's dragging a leg. They go off this way. Set of tracks here. One of them split up. One of them could have gone over the rocks. Yeah, one of them could be carried too. You want to split? Yeah. I think I better. I'll follow this track. Okay, I'll take the rocks. Watch yourself. Mm -hmm. further 
Leave me. Leave me behind, Dave. No, I... I ain't gonna leave it, Chuck. You ain't got a choice. This is it for me, Dave. This I'm at the end of my rope. Honest, Dave. these four days. Do it all over. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't, so forget it, will you? I'm scared. Yeah, well, so am I. Did you ever think of that? I wish I'd never seen one of them things. I purely, honestly do, Mr. Cartwright. It's all over now, boy. Drop the gun. Joe, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you right in the belly if you don't stay where you are. I told you to drop the gun. Joe, please don't make me shoot you. I'm telling you. Stay where you are. I'm giving you a choice. You drop that gun or I'll kill you right now. Joe. I swear to you, I'll kill you. All the way, on the ground.
Joe, he, he tried to kill me. I, I didn't have any choice. I had to get him. I had to. Joe, don't you see? I'm telling you. I didn't have one choice. Don't you see that? There's a judge and jury waiting for you. Let's go. About a half hour to fill the rest of this order. Yeah, that's all right, Bob. Take your time. I'll be back in a little while. Right. It's very tough to get three in a row. Ah, oh, that's really remarkable shooting, though. Uh, you two fellas must be about the best gun hands in town, huh? Yeah, we're pretty good. Just one better. Stand right over there. Now, who's that? His name's Joe Cartwright. Hey, little Joe? Hi, Pete. Somebody over there I want you to meet. Uh, who is he? He says he's from St. Louis. His name's Fitz. I don't win. Hi, Joe. This is, uh... Little Joe Cartwright, Mr. Fitz. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. My pleasure. Nice to see you. I'll show you how it's really done. He's the best in the territory. Uh, it would be a privilege to see you in action, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, that is, if uh, you don't mind going along with an Easterner's whim. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I've always been fascinated by the West, especially the way you fellas handle your guns. Hey, go ahead, Joe. There's still three bottles left. Uh, that's what I call a real shooter. I'd appreciate it if you let me buy you a drink, all of you. After a demonstration like that, I feel I owe you something. All right, you got a deal, but I'm buying. All right, whatever you say. Seems like this better come night. <laughs> Listen, I better get to the bank before it closes. Uh, don't forget to pick up those clothes at New York. We ordered Right, right. Hey, Paul, I'll meet you over the silver dollar. Little Joe promised to buy us a beer before we went home. And I don't want to let an opportunity like that get clean away. Neither do I. See you in about 20 minutes. Yes, sir, you boys sure know how to handle a gun. It was so fast, I couldn't even see it. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. much of a whiskey drink. Slows you down, huh? Yeah, to a crawl. I can understand how it'd be dangerous for a man like you. You need razor-sharp reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing, sir? You're a dude, aren't you, mister? I'm from St. Louis, yes, sir. Uh, from St. Louis, I guess that does make you a dude, all right. But these young men have been taking me in hand. They've been showing me how a six-gun is handled. Mister, you don't go to a kindergarten class to learn about a six-gun. 
Look, we're just having a nice, friendly beer here in a public bar. So why don't you go about your business, huh? Hey, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Yeah, I get by. Go on. Show them how many notches you've got on your gun. Well, that's the way it's done, isn't it? One notch for every man that you've killed? Come on, how many notches do you have? Go ahead, kid. Show them how many notches you've got, huh? Don't you watch it, mister. Oh, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Got a lesson to learn. Gentlemen, 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 please. Please, this, this bar is too crowded for any gunplay. Now, take your quarrel outside. All right. I'll meet you at the warehouse at the other end of town, where you bottle babies were playing. I'll be there tomorrow morning at 6.30. I'll be there. Good boy, Joe. You can take him easy. Sure, Joe. He's just another old side. Well, captain. you got yourself a real gunfight challenge, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> ah, but I suppose that doesn't bother a tough young rooster like you, huh? <laughs> just between the two of us, how many notches do you have on your gun? Look, we'll lay off that stuff now. Ah, uh, you don't want to brag, huh? Hey, you fellas, tell me. How many men has the kid got to his credit? Oh, how many is it now, Joe? Ten or eleven? Ten or eleven? Hey, that's really something. It's a wind's idea of a joke. A joke? Oh. Well, from the way you fellas were talking before, I thought... Oh, I see. All that uh, was just talk. What do you mean, talk? You've seen little Joe shoot? Oh, yeah, bottles, yes. But it's quite a different thing when your target can shoot back. huh? Isn't that right, Mr. Cartwright? I'm willing to lay a little bet that Mr. Cartwright won't even show tomorrow morning. Why don't you shut your mouth? What's the matter with him? I said was that I was willing to bet money that he wouldn't show at the fight tomorrow. That was all. Why don't you put money where your mouth is, mister? How's $5,000? Can you match it? I ain't got that kind of money. Well, how much you got? Hmm? All or any part? Yeah. 30 bucks? 30 bucks. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, Sam Tucker's the name, friend. <laughs> well, I wonder if you'd mind holding the bet, Mr. Tucker, please. Why not? Be glad to. Now, that's $30 that little Joe doesn't show. Or if he does, that the other fellow takes him. Hmm? Anybody else want to get in on the action? Huh? I got $5,000 here. Hey, Who fish. wants to bet on... I'll take 50 on Joe Cartwright. All right, Pete. That's 50 on little Joe Cartwright. Yeah, Mr. Tucker. Anybody five, else? Five, 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 Anybody else? All right, one at a time. 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 One What's going on here? Ain't you heard? Heard what? Little Joe's been challenged to the gunfight in the morning. What? That fella there is taking bets. Joe won't even show up. I don't understand it. Paul, I left him less than an hour ago. How could he get in so much trouble this quick? We're going to find that brother of yours and find out. Shut up. 
All right, here's that. Hey, 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 gentlemen, gentlemen, hold it, hold it. Hold it. This is all I've got left of the 5,000. Mr. Tucker has all your bets written down. And the last of this money goes for drinks on me. So step up. Hey, 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 Don't worry, honey. Business will pick up later tonight. Oh, no, no. I wasn't worrying about that. <sighs> Something else. That fell at the bar? Yeah. I knew him a long time ago. He didn't seem very happy seeing you. What's his name? Dan Taggart. <sighs> I really don't know why I should even bother about it. I mean, after all, it's been a long time ago, and... It's dead and forgotten. But, uh... I guess a girl never really forgets a man that she... that she knew when she was young and... Does she, Martha? She does if she's got good sense. I need a black king. Well, not a thing, Paul. Boy, it just don't make sense. It's got to be some sort of mistake. Well, it has been a mistake, all right. It was your brother who made it. Now, will you check and see if he's been to the general store? I'll, I'll ask down with the blacksmiths. Yeah. Paul, there's got to be some sort of explanation. Let him make it. First of all, let's find him and check in there. He ain't over there. Reckon he could have hit it back to the ranch? Oh, I don't know. He certainly got this town on an uproar. You know what that blacksmith wanted to do? What? You want to give me odds in the gunfight? You go up to the bank, see if he's there. I'll check into the warehouse. He should have been finished loading that wagon an hour ago. He should have been doing a lot of things this afternoon. All he succeeded in doing is getting himself into a peck of trouble. I'll meet you back here. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that's it, Joe. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm looking all over for you. Do you realize you have this whole town in an uproar? Do you know what's going on at the saloon? Yes, sir, I know. Well? Oh, it's just a little misunderstanding, that's all. Oh, just a little misunderstanding, that's all. A gunfight is a little misunderstanding. Now, what's it all about? Well, a fellow over in a bar gave me a hard time, and I... Lost my temper. You lost your temper? I'll, I'll take care of it. And how do you propose doing that? Oh, I'll, go, I'll go over to the hotel and I'll apologize to him. All right. And as soon as you've done that, you get yourself up to the Ponderosa and stay there. Is that clear? Yes, sir, that's clear. I'll be home as soon as I can. Maybe I ought to go with you just to make sure. I can apologize to him alone. I promise and I'll be home. Hey, Joe, we've been looking all over for you. You ought to see the action over at the Silver Dollar. Old Sheriff Coffee would have a fit if you were here. Everybody in town's betting their pay on you. And one pull of that trigger boy can make us all rich. Why don't you two grow up? What do you mean, grow up? We better pay on you, Joe. Hey, uh, I mean, you are gonna show up, aren't you? No, I'm not gonna show up. You think I'll have a gunfight over nothing? But he challenged you and you said you'd meet him. So what? Well, like Pete said, we all got our pay on you. Right, fine. Maybe you two will know better next time. Hey, Joe, look. I mean, all the, you know, all your friends, the hands at the ranch, the people you know, they're all betting on you. And you don't, you don't show up, and you know what they're gonna say. What, that I'm scared? Look, I don't have to prove anything to the people in this town. You still gotta live here. If you don't show up, you know people gonna talk. And they're gonna say you're a coward. You know that that's what everybody's gonna say. Joe, you still around? I thought perhaps you would have deemed it uh, advisable to stay away from town for a few days. Uh, but uh, perhaps your friends inside are right. You do have courage. Just what's your game, Fitz? Game? Oh, uh, the bets. Yeah, the bets. 
Well, I just know a sure thing when I see it. A chance to pick up a little quick money, as they say. On my life or the other man's? Now look, I didn't start the fight. You did. Uh, this code that uh, you all live by out here. That is very honorable, very noble, and very stupid. Why shouldn't someone make a good use of it? Well, there isn't going to be any fight. Fine. I win either way. And you lose either way. Yes, it's quite simple. Tomorrow afternoon, I'll be on the stage to San Francisco, and you'll either be dead or a disgrace. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Is what I hear right? Uh, you're going to be in a gunfight? Who told you about that? It's all over town. Everybody's talking about it. I even put a few dollars on you myself. Yeah, you're a great big hero now, Joe. Look, Joe. I got something here you can use. Well, I've already got a holster, thanks. Joe. Not like this. I make it up special for some fella... Last year, he never come back to pick it up. I think maybe he got himself killed. <laughs> I'd let you have it for a very good price. No, thanks. Joe. This is special. It can't grab or bind. <laughs> it's got a spring inside. As soon as you touch the gun, it pushes it right up in your hand. It'll maybe give you an edge. Of half a second, Joe. I'm not interested. Joe, it could make all the difference in the world for just a few dollars. I told you I'm not interested. Yeah. Mr. Taggart? I wanted to talk to you. All right. Talk. Look, the whole thing had happened in a bar this afternoon. We both lost our tempers. Why don't we just call it that and forget it, huh? You trying to make a fool out of me, kid? Look, mister, I'm trying to square this thing. Now, it was just a spilled drink, nothing more. Certainly not worth a shooting. I made my play, boy. In public. I'll be at that warehouse in the morning. Oh, come on, this doesn't make sense. The whole thing is ridiculous. Is it? You may be willing to let this town call you a coward, boy. But I'm not. Nobody calls me a coward, mister. You just be there. Now beat it. <laughs> What do you want? To see you. All right. You've seen me. Dan, may I come in? It's been a long time. Drink. You do drink. Or only uh, 
Only professionally. I drink when I'm asked, if I want to. Dan, they say that you're going to fight that boy. They're right. Why? Well, I like to fight. No, what's happened to you? Look, I didn't ask you any questions, did I? We're ten years older and twenty years wiser. Or are we? Why did you come up here? To talk for the kid? No. Look, just drink your drink and get out. And forget that you ever saw me again. Dan, look at me. It's too late. Now, just get out. you ever saw in me, ever. I saw the most handsome man I ever knew. And the nicest. And I, I was... You were beautiful. So beautiful. I remember the first time I ever saw you was at a church social with your ma and pa. You were hiding behind a, a great big caramel fudge cake. <laughs> Remember? That silly cake. How could I forget? What happened to us? Why didn't you come back? I was coming back, Sally. I was coming back with the Parsons. Your father's three hired guns met us. The Parson told me to, to leave. At least until he had a chance to talk to your pa. Well, I rode. I rode for two days trying to lose them. But they followed. When I hit a town, I... I got drunk. Real drunk. That night, I killed my first man. After that, how could I come back? With a posse on my neck. Oh, dear. I didn't know. I didn't know. I heard about you. And how your pa and the whole town chased you out like you was... like you was an animal. Dan, the town didn't matter. None of that mattered to me. I, I just wanted you. I... I looked for you. I looked... All over for you. I, I couldn't find you. You. I looked for you too, Sally. I looked. And the more I couldn't find you, the more I... Or the more I drank and... The more I killed. Dan, don't. It's over. Is it? Then why are you here? Why are you here like this? Painted up like that? Dressed like that? Why am I here? Don't you see what we've become? Dan, I love you. I've always loved you. And I've waited. I... <laughs> Sally, I wish... I wish we could... No. Sally. Hey, Joe. Hey, buddy. Did you talk to that fella? 
Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what do you say? I'd rather not talk about it now. What do you mean you'd rather Come on, not? Let me alone, Leon. He didn't feel like talking, boy. He went up to bed. Oh? Did he talk to that fellow in town? Yeah, but I don't think he had much success from the way he acted. Oh, well, we'll just find out. Joseph? Did you uh, talk to that fellow in town? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what did he have to say? He wouldn't accept my apology. I have no choice now. You have no choice. What does that mean? You have no choice except to go into town and get yourself killed tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's right. Well, what kind of sense does that make? Well, it doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. But what do you want me to do? Just turn and walk away from it? Yes, just turn and walk away from it. That takes courage, too. There's no dishonor in that. I can't do that. You can't. Do you realize what those so-called friends of yours are doing in town? They're placing money bets on your life. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Now, you listen to me, young man. I don't want you to have anything to do with it. Just forget the whole thing. I'm a little old to be talked to like that. Then act your age. You stay here tomorrow. He'll ride out of town and the whole thing will be forgotten. Is that understood? So what happened, Paul? What happened? There's not going to be any gunfight. That's what happened. This was 30 years ago, and I was little Joe. I know what I'd be doing tomorrow. Yeah. I know what you'd be doing too, Paul. That, that's what makes that rub so tough, ain't it? You'd be going through with it. Yeah, foolish as it might be, I'd be gone. I was just up there telling him that he couldn't go. Five years ago, I locked the door on him. Kept him in his room. I treated him like a child. He's a man. And I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid for him too, Paul. He's your son. But he's my brother. Hey, Paul. How would it be if... If I went up and talked to him. You could try. I will. Let's go get some sleep, huh? I'll be up in a bit. Yes, sir. Good night, Paul. Come in. Yeah, come on. I was just downstairs talking to Paul. He seemed pretty upset. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd come up and see if he wanted to talk. 
I guess everything's been said that there is to talk about. Yeah. Feller really rode you pretty hard, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Well, that burn it how you feel. Man just naturally hates to get his pride hurt. But that burn it, Joe, it ain't worth getting killed over. No more lectures. Huh? I've been through that already tonight. Hey, maybe if I went into town and got my hands on that yahoo, he wouldn't be so happy to get himself in a gunfight, huh? Yeah, brother, that's all I need, to have you go in town fight my battles for me. That'd really fix me up. Dad, Bernie, Joe, you, you're my little brother. If anything was to happen to you, I'd... Yeah, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen to me. You mean, you might not go through with it? I just don't know yet. I gotta, gotta think on it a little while. You can see that, can't you? Yeah, Dad, Barnett, I can see it. I can understand it. But I don't like it none. Thanks. For what? For being my brother. Don't they ever go home? It's pay night. What time is it? About midnight. Pay night is a big night, Dan. Don't. I don't like hearing you talk that way. I have to live. Like that? Isn't there anything else you could do? I took what I could get. Stop it. I don't want you to go down there. With those drunken pigs. Sally. Don't leave. I don't want to be alone. Stay with me. Oh, Dan. Just talk to me. All right. I'll stay. Listen to him down there. It's the same in every town. Roman circus. Give them a killing, a hanging, a shooting. They all turn into animals.
Sally. It's daylight. Oh, Dan. Is it time? Shh. Oh, Dan. Oh. You'd better go now. Oh, please, Dan, don't. I'll be leaving town in about an hour. One way or, or the other. I don't want you out there. Do you understand? No. no. <laughs> You're still so beautiful. Who's the girl? It's none of your business. You've been up all night again, haven't you? Probably boozing it up with that... Shut up. What's gotten into you, Taggart? You know you're getting jumpier every day. I'll tell you what's gotten into me. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of me. And of the stinking things I do. Sick, huh? I just remember what you were when I picked you up in Denver. At least I was clean. Clean? You're a two-bit gunfighter turning yourself into a bottle of booze. Someday I'm going to put a fist right in that mouth of yours. Or a bullet through that fat skull. Now, just take it easy, Taggart. You've got everything you want. You've got all the money you need. You've got an easy life. All I have to do is commit murder for it. Do you know what it's like killing a man? You think it gets easier, don't you? You're a coward, Fitz. You've never faced a man in your life. <laughs> Talking to you is like, it's like a rabbit trying to explain speed to a snail. Kid came up here last night. Trying to square it. Came to me trying to square it. Imagine that. Poor kid. He's gonna get killed just to make you richer. You better watch out, Taggart. Or it might be you. If you don't stop building that stuff. Yeah, you're right. Could be me someday. Some night, some ugly morning. I'm gonna meet some punk kid who's gonna take me. That'll be the end of it. Every crummy little town's got a boot hill for bums like you and me. Decent people, one place. Bums in Boot Hill. Rocks instead of flowers. Oh, don't worry, Harry. I'm gonna shoot that Cartwright kid as straight and as fast as I can. Oh, 
What? Little Joe's gone. Saddle the horses. Kid. Why did you have to pick that Cartwright kid? One of those other two would have been just as good. More like the usual loudmouth clod you always get. Because that Cartwright kid has quite a following. Made it easier to take their money. Yeah, maybe a lot easier than it'll be to take him. You don't really think he'll show, do you? He'll show pride. Pride, that's what does it. That's what roped me in. The great code of the West. Face your man or sell out your self-respect. Yeah, that's what gets us all. Well, don't tear it down. It's made us a lot of money. You as well as me. The only difference is that I do the killing. 610. You better let me be there for five minutes before you show. Good luck. Good morning, Mr. Taggart. Well, gentlemen, little Joe Cartwright has just three minutes before he forfeits. Three minutes, gentlemen. Hey, Fitz, what's he trying to do? What? That is not the same gun rig he was wearing yesterday, pal. You'll have to ask him, friend. I just take the bets. And you're about to forfeit the whole thing. Two and a half minutes, gentlemen.
You're the winner. You pay the boys off. Give my 400. You think it was really worth it? Be a good idea if we just sat down and made ourselves comfortable and oh, talk this over. And, <laughs> talk this oh, over and I. Uh... Oh. Uh, would you mind taking your feet off the table, please? Mm. Thank you. I, would you like a cold drink of some sort? Oh, that's yeah. Very fine. <laughs> Thank you. Joseph, would you get the lemonade, uh, please? I'll yes, never mind. mind. You just stay right where you are. Joseph will get the lemonade. Is a pretty house. Ah, sugar plum. Is this the honeymoon nest you wrote me about? If you're pulling now, look here, ma'am. I ain't never wrote you nothing about nothing. There's been some sort of mistake somewhere along the line. Well, of course you wrote her. Sis saved all them letters. Oh, uh, you, uh, you have some letters? I certainly have. Right there in that traveling bag. Uh, I'd like to see those, if I may. Them's private. Between sugar plum and me. Ain't no stranger gonna see those letters. This ain't no stranger. This here's my paw. Appears to me like somebody's trying to weasel their way out of something. After we spent every last cent we got it getting out here. I'd say we've been slickered. Now, wait just a minute. Now, first of all, put those guns down. Just, just set them down. Yeah. Now, right, you've been boys. saying some things here about my son. Joseph, will you get the lemonade? Oh, the yeah, lemonade. Yeah. Now, I hope you can back up those statements you've been making. <laughs> Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Chester, since when have you been taking a stealing pies? Oh, no, no, little Joe. This is my own apple cobbler that Hop Singh made for my little Jenny. Bless her heart. Oh. <laughs> sure, then, where are you sneaking around here like a little elf? Sure, and that would be my own business, Mr. Cartwright. I saw his advertisement in the matrimony paper where he asked that any widow who wanted to get married to write him. Mel, I ain't never advertised or nothing. Ain't that right, Paul? Oh, Sugar Plum, how could you? Oh, <laughs> Miss, Miss Annie. Oh, oh. you can see for yourself. In, in this one, he asked me to marry him. And in this one, he sent me his picture. And in this one, he tells me he's a rich rancher. And the Ponderosa is going to be our honeymoon cottage. It sure does look like horse with that prize hog of his. Hmm. But Paul, that ain't even... That ain't even my handwriting. And I guess you're gonna tell me that that ain't no picture of you hugging that hog, neither. Oh, sugar plum. I never thought you could do this to me. They ain't nobody gonna jilt our little Annie and get away with it. Well, what are we gonna do with this here black beard? The blue, blue beard. 
I don't care what color his whiskers is. There's going to be a wedding just like we planned. Or somebody's going to get sued from here to kingdom come. There's laws against guilt and helpless widows. Wait a minute. There's going to be a wedding just like we planned. Let me respect you. There's going to be a wedding. Somebody answer the door. Somebody answer the door. Excuse me. I'll do it myself. Oh, yes, ma'am. Pardon, monsieur. Perhaps I was misinformed in the village. Is this not the uh, chateau of... Bootsy! Uh... <laughs> oh, mon chéri! My beautiful Bootsy! Moi, je t'adore! Oh, you you just a few balls off my man, you feather-bound Jezebel! Insolent peasant! How dare you insult Yvette! Go back to your housework! Housework? Ladies, no, I'll ladies. show you some housework, you, you, you overpainted, pie-faced, calculating. I get... La ladies, 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 dignity, 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 please. Lemonade? Oh. Tell you, Hoss, according to lawyer Minton, both those ladies got a good case against you. They decided to take you into court. According to the evidence, all supports their story. You know, from the point of view of the legalities and the standpoint of the jury, they got a good case against you. So then, so about the only chance I got is to find the A who it really wrote them dad burn letters, ain't it? That's about it, Hoss. Well, I better get inside and order all this stuff our guests wanted. Quite a list, huh? Look, Paul, maybe I'll see you at Twilight. I think I'll go over at the saloon and get me a bunch of beer. Oh, no, no, I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to the Ponderosa. Make sure those two females don't tear that place apart room by room. Now move. But... Get going. Oopsie. <laughs> oh, man. Howdy, Ben. What can I do for you? Hey, Matt, you wouldn't have any troubles, would you? Well, ben, I got all kinds of troubles. No, not troubles, Matt. I got plenty of those myself. No, uh, truffles. Truffles. Truffles? Yeah, you know, something to eat. Never heard of them. What are they like? Well, uh, they're, they're, it's a, uh, well, never mind. How about escargot? Escar what? Escargot. Well, that's French for snails. Now, I know you're joking. No, I wish I was. I got a house full of people at the Ponderosa yeah, State. News travels fast, Ben. Yeah, bad news. Well, anyway, one of them's a young French woman. Miss Truffles and Snails, that was her idea. Trying to get at a man to his stomach. You ain't saying Hoss is going to eat snails, are you, Ben? Well, you can't insult your guests. Under those conditions, I'd be willing to try. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't blame you. <laughs> oh, listen, I've been meaning to ask you. Uh, you handle all the mail that comes through here, don't you? Most of the time. Or sometimes Jester does. Oh, uh, well, do you remember any mail going through here with uh, these names on it, like uh, Yvette Devereaux, New Orleans? Nope. Hmm. How about Annie Slocum, Kentucky? I don't guess I do. Wouldn't be likely to forget them names, either. No, I guess not. Well, I'll, uh, I'll talk to Jester about them. Didn't come to work today. Uh, Jenny's sick again. Oh, sorry to hear that. I guess Jester be at the house, huh? Well, listen, he's out scrounging himself up some other work somewhere, so on my time. Things I don't know about it that Killarney Road bended. <laughs> well, good luck to Hoss. May the best gal win. Oh, don't say that too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, uh... You uh, make out the rest of that place. I'll accept them. Truffles and snails. I'll be back in a little while. All right, Ben. Snails. <laughs> Jenny, darling, please. The doctor only wants to help you. Don't want no smell, you old doctor. Send him away. 
Oh, now, honey, look. Don't make me break the door down. She's having an attack, Jester. Yeah. I'll have to get to her pretty soon. I don't want no smell your doctor. Send him away. Well, Jester, I guess that's it. No use hanging around since Jenny's not going to open that door. I'll be going now. <laughs> yes, Doctor. <laughs> goodbye. And a goodbye to you, Doctor. Is he gone? Well, <laughs> Come on now, Come Jenny. On, one bed. Come on now, in the bed you go. Before she has in the bed you go there. Now, Jenny, Jenny, darling, you're going oh, to take this good cool. medicine. Are you ready, all, Doctor? No. Oh. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Just remember to give her a half a teaspoonful of this every couple of hours. Ah, uh, that I will, Doctor. You go to sleep. You sleep. She'll be all right, won't she, Doctor? For now, Jester. She's not responding. In fact, she's succeeding in making herself even worse and is developing signs of asthma, which could become really serious in time. Well, you get her the best medicines you can. I'll find the money to pay for them somehow. Jester, you know and I know that the best medicine for Jenny would be a mother. A real mother. Not an imaginary one, not a memory. I had a notion, a dream, a wild dream but I never counted on the fatal charm of that Haas Cartwright. And now it has destroyed my best laid plans. What in the world are you talking about, Jester? What's Haas Cartwright got to do with you? There's no earthly use discussing it. I've lost my last, my most desperate bid for the happiness of my tiny tot, my lovely Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, oh, Jenny, now, please, now, Jenny. Please. She's as pixelated as you are, Jester. Get that child in bed. I've got to go now. I must be seven calls behind by now. Yes, Doctor. I am dying, Daddy, oh. dying. He's given me poison. <laughs> oh, Jenny. I'll be by again tomorrow. Well, uh, thank you kindly, Doctor. You gotta save me. That French gal, she's dangerous. <laughs> you know, I don't know what you got that these women want, but whatever it is, I'll show you to bottle it and sell it. Oh, let's see. Joe, Ooh, you're my brother. You gotta help me. Bad, bad boy. Oh, mon cher, il est, oh, il est si joli. Si adorable, vraiment. Regarde ses beaux yeux. Oh, oh. bien. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Why you paint a pile of French pastry? I warned you to keep your hands off my husband to be. Your husband to be. You can't fed Amazon. You. <laughs> you can't fed Amazon. You ah! can't fed Amazon. Eh? Why? Why I'll slug you so hard that sky will be raining feathers. Excuse me, Poopsie. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Libby Spenceville. Libby Spenceville, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, let, let me guess. You're looking for Horse Cartwright. Yes. My fiance. What a magnificent house. Oh, we should have a simply glorious wedding. Things like that. 
I didn't want that big old doctor around, Daddy. I want you to stay with me always. Oh, my poor baby. I tried being mother and father to you, and I failed you in both. I had a real mommy once, didn't I, Daddy? That you did, darling. My mommy. Tell me again about my mommy, please. She was the dearest, loveliest spirit the good Lord ever put inside a body. And I loved her so much. And so it was she chose me that together we could have a lovely, sweet little girl. Was that little girl me? Yes, dear heart, it was you. It was you, Jenny. to see Jenny? Yeah, poor child. I don't know which is worse, her asthma or her need for a mother's care. Yeah, I, I can't understand why Jester doesn't get married again. I've tried to talk him into it, Ben, believe me, but you know Jester. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why, just a little while ago, he was babbling some nonsense about some wild scheme and about Hoss's charm having destroyed his plans. Wait a minute, what did you say? He said Hoss's charms had destroyed his plans? Yeah, he said he didn't have a chance against Hoss's charms. Guess you didn't know that you'd spawned a real charmer, did you, Ben? <laughs> uh, no, I sure didn't, but I'm just beginning to find out. So that's what this is all about. I swear it must be the weather. Now you're talking just as mysterious as Jester himself. Well, I gotta be off. So long. Yeah, so long, Doc. And thanks. Thanks. Come in. Well, thank you, Jester. It's good to see you. Oh, say, I just passed the doctor. I'm sorry to hear about Jenny. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. She's feeling better, sound oh, asleep. Good, but good. it's very considerate of you to come asking about her, and I thank you for it. <laughs> I'll get you the coffee. Oh, uh, listen, I, I came here to see you huh? about some letters. Letters? What letters would you be meaning, Mr. Cartwright? Well, strange thing. It seems that somebody has been forging Hoss's name to some letters and oh, having a postmark Virginia City. That's against the law. A body could go to jail for that. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. You wouldn't uh, know anything about them, would you? Me, Mr. Cartwright? You see, you and Matt are the only two handling the mail, and uh, I knew it wasn't Matt, so I thought perhaps it might be you. Now, you, you, try to remember something. See, I... these letters were written to two different women. Oh. Now, see if these names mean anything to you. Yes, yes, of course. Annie Slocum. Annie Slocum? Yes. Annie Slocum. And the other one is Yvette Devereaux. Yvette Devereaux, huh? Now, those names should be kind of easy to remember, don't you think? It's coming back to me, Mr. Cartwright. It's coming back to me. I remember now it was a stranger that mailed them. Yes, sir. Sure enough, I'm beginning to see him now. Fleshy dressed with a fancy vest. I'd say a gambling man. And he posted those letters. That's right. A fleshy dressed gambling man. Well, that explains how the letters were posted. Then. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, what do you think happened to the letters that the ladies sent to Hoss? Oh, yes, oh, yes. The you... letters the ladies sent to Hoss. Yes, you see, oh, those yes. ladies answered Hoss's letters. Oh, yes. And uh, they must have gone through the post office, except that uh, Hoss never received them. Oh, yes. Hoss... What do you think happened to them? 
What do you think happened to them now? Oh, yes, what happened to them? Well, maybe they was lost. Yeah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe they were stolen. All of them? It don't hold water, do it? Oh, uh, well. Of course, it, it really, it really isn't, uh, it really isn't your fault, is it? It's not? No, of course not. Oh? You were hired as a postal employee, not as a detective. Oh, sure now, and that's a fact, sir. Now, you could really be of great help to me if you wanted to be. And how could I be that? By helping me prove my theory. Oh, yes. And what might that be, sir? It could be that Hoss, my son Hoss, in an impassioned moment, wrote those letters ah. and then had this mysterious gambler mail them for him. Ah. Or it could be that little Joe wrote those letters as a joke on Hoss. Oh, glory be! In either case, <laughs> you will help me, won't you? I certainly will, sir. How? By coming to the Ponderosa and being with my guests. You'll bring Jenny, of course. And while you're there... I'll observe for suspicious moves. Exactly, exactly. Yes, now you're thinking, yes, Jester, now you're thinking. <laughs> I can't tell you how greatly relieved I am to find that your thinking of this matter so exactly coincides with mine. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> well, now, how about that coffee, huh? Well, now, that's a wonderful idea. Uh, there you are, <laughs> sir. Nice hot coffee. I keep it on the stool. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I don't think your brother's going to appreciate you laughing like that. Oh, I can't help it, Pie. It looks like a young rooster with a whole flock of pullets. <laughs> hey, Jester, how you doing? And a good day to you, little Joe. Good. Oh, and how's my little Jenny? You miss me, baby? Little Joe, Hoss did look funny. <laughs> why was that lady chasing him? Uh, but why, why was the lady chasing him? But they were playing a little kind of a game of tag, Jenny. Hoss! <laughs> You naughty boy! Where are you hiding? <laughs> Hoss, dear! Where are you? Who's that? Hmm? Oh, that, that's Libby Spenceville. She checked in while you were in town. She's from New England. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Not another. Oh, yeah. And she's elevating Hoss's mentality. Teaching him about, oh, things like Chaucer and New England history. That sort of thing, so they'll be compatible when they get married. In the meantime, Big Annie Slocum's fixed about four messes of possum for Hoss. I never thought I'd see my brother turn green at the dinner table. He'd been hiding in the barn till Yvette found him. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. Mr. Cartwright, perhaps ain't going to quit. Chester. Oh, Mm, it's a big day. I leaving today, no, unless not. this foreign lady go back to Kentucky. Mr. Cartwright, this man has got to go. He is constantly underfoot in my kitchen. Now, her kitchen? In my kitchen. I just caught him trying to put a dirty old bird's nest in my soup for a horse. Hmm. Scat, 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 scat. Hmm. Uh, oh, oh. Don't worry, everything oh. will be all right. You go to the kitchen now. No wonder poor sugar plum eats like a bird. Like a, a bird? bird? Who are they? Oh, uh... Uh, Annie Slocum, this is Mr. Jester McGillicuddy. Glad to make your acquaintance, Mum. Howdy. And uh, Miss Jenny McGillicuddy. Jenny, say hello to the lady. I'd rather not. Oh, so you'd rather not, eh? Oh, in Kane Tuck, I'd know how to peel a little turnip like you. Oh! Jenny! Shame on you, girl. Shame on you. What'll Miss Annie think? 
I think I'll be needing some help in the kitchen with my vegetable cutting. Come on, young lady. I think I'm going to be short of breath, Daddy. I think I'm going to be sick. We Kentucky folks have a cure for what ails her. It's called work. Uh, well, help, Daddy, Mr. Carter. She's going to beat me. I'm going to faint. That'll be the day. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, do you think that my Jenny is safe with that woman? Well, I tell you, Jess, it seems to me that uh, Annie's medicine might be just the right thing for her. Oh. oh. Hoss, what are you... What the devil? I've been up there in my room. Where's them gals? Outside getting some air. What are you skulking around like this for? Well, Dad burned it, Paul, between Miss Yvette and her truffles and snails and, and Ned and Jed and their mess of possums and, and Miss Libby cramming all that fancy bookwork down my brain. I'm, I'm about to blow a cork. Yeah, I've, I've been giving this problem of yours a bit of consideration, son. You have three brides and one very reluctant bridegroom. That's not very good odds. Unless... Unless what? You got him, Eddie? Well, I, I just might have, son. Weren't you and little Joe gonna play poker over at Will Parker's tonight? Yeah, I was gonna. Hoss, I think you just ought to go over there and play poker. And uh, make sure you go through the kitchen. All right. I want to be dependent on you. Good evening. Good evening, Bonsoir. Lovely ladies, and a lovely night. Couple of nice boys, Ned and Jed. Nice boys. It's strange how people can show their loneliness to their music. And you'd never know. Those boys have hearts as big as potato sacks, but lonely as a desert night. Poor boys. Poor boys. What'll they do when Annie leaves them? How they'll miss the soft touch of a woman in their life. Poor boys. So lonely. Just like me. Nobody wants me. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that, no, sir. <laughs> Why, do you know that I heard the Slocum boys saying that... Well, I... I guess I can tell you. Well, I, I heard them Slocum boys say that... Uh, that you and Miss Libby here were two real beauties. Oh, there are a lot of fish in the ocean. You know that son, horse of mine. Well, he never did know a pretty woman when he saw one. Did they? The Slocum boys, did they really say that we... Well, they, they never come right out blunt-like and say that, uh, let me tell you about those two boys. Underneath those rough exteriors beat two hearts of gold. Yes, ma'am, two hearts of gold. It's time for me to be turning in. Good night, ladies. 
Pleasant dreams. Bonsoir, Monsieur Cartwright. It is lovely music, isn't it? Divine, one might say. Poor boys. They do sound lonely. Do they not? Terribly. That's pretty. Yeah. Hey, Ned. Look at them stars. Like wildflowers on fire, ain't they? Pretty, all right. Kind of reminds me of old Kentuck. The moon's just like a big old lantern. You homesick, Ned? Kinda, I guess. Well, this is mighty fine country. Feller could set his roots down if he put his mind to it. Yeah, and, and come spring, planting some corn and hoeing it and watching it grow. Maybe building a little old still out back. <laughs> Making us up a big old batch of that pure golden. Good old Mountain Dew. <sighs> Mountain Dew. Wouldn't that be something? That sure would be something. Makes my old mouth water and just thinking about it. <laughs> it makes me kind of lonely just saying them words. Mountain Dew. Good old Mountain Dew. Oh, now that's enough of that stuff for one night. Oh, aren't you going to play just a bit more? Uh, how long you two she-males been standing there? Just a few minutes. But we just love your music. It is, well, how shall I say, very romantic. Let's get out of here, brother. Why, if I didn't know better, I'd think you gentlemen didn't like us. I think they do like us, but they are afraid. Aren't you, mon chéri? Afraid of a woman? Well, maybe Frenchmen is afraid of women, but not us mountain men. Oh, Frenchmen never runs from a lovely woman. Never. Or don't you think we are lovely? Well, you, you, you're passable, I reckon. And am I possible? Passable, ma'am, passable. Is there a difference? As you would say, viva la différence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brother Ned, I think they're talking in some language I don't rightly understand. We are talking the language of love. Love? <laughs> I, I could love my mule and my squirrel gun, but I reckon that's about all. <laughs> don't forget that sour mash, Brother. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> oh, poor things. You will have to be taught. Taught? <laughs> oh, pardon, monsieur. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. I just... Oh, well, I did not see you. I, I didn't see you neither. I, I was just uh, poking along and thinking about... Last night, uh, down by the corral. Uh, uh, I was also thinking. That's funny, both us thinking at once. Y you know, I think all the time, nearly. And, and sometimes I think about the doggonest things. Really? Oh, yeah. You know, once I was a walking along, and suddenly I commenced to thinking about how I'd like to just peel off my boots and, and, and run in the mud, just like a little old kid. A and did you? Sure did, just like that. How thrilling to be so impulsive. Impulsive? I, I, I ain't scared of nothing that walks or swims or crawls. Not even girls? Well, I... I just... Oh, you do not seem afraid of me. Well, I, I reckon I forgot that you was a girl just Ooh, for a minute. You're just saying that. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, Miss Yvette, I ain't. Well, if it wasn't for that horse cart right, I'd... Oh, I'd... You do what, Monsieur Slocum? Well, I'd, I'd... Monsieur Slocum. Are you fond of escargot? Escargot? Well, seeing I ain't never met him, it'd be hard to say yes or no, ma'am. <laughs> you silly boy. <laughs> have you any new body told you you have a delightful sense of humor? Let's talk about New Orleans. Have you ever been there, mon chéri? I never did see what you gals saw in that horse, anyhow. 
except he was big and rich and handsome, <laughs> which any fellow could be if he'd set his mind to it. <laughs> what, you been reading, a cookbook? Uh, why, no, it's Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Don't you think he's divine? Is he Yankee or South? Well, I imagine he'd be classified a Yankee. I don't like him then. Oh? Have you read him, Mr. Slocum? No. I ain't ever met him. Oh, of course, I, I ain't got nothing against Yankee shemales. Naturally, I hate men Yankees more than I hate potato bugs. Mr. Slocum, now what quarrel could you possibly have with this beautiful passage? Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I... Well, I, I, I'll own, for a Yankee, it ain't bad. I reckon I'm pretty dumb. I ain't had no time for schooling. While Sister Annie was growing up, me and Brother Ned had to work on the farm, uh, us being just orphans. And you sacrificed yourself for her. Oh, how noble, how inspired. Why, Mr. Slocum, Jed, makes me want to cry. Oh, oh, well, I, I was just... Oh, there's beauty in your soul, Jed. There is? I knew it from the very first moment I saw you. But I was blind. You were? Blinded by selfishness, thinking only of myself, tossing myself shamelessly at Hoss Cartwright without a thought to... T to me? Precisely. Oh, dearest Jed. You must read. You must learn to read. You must let me guide you, as Lady Beatrice guided Dante through the wonders which lie before us. You really think you could learn a dumb mule like me to read and write? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, dear Jed. Oh, Miss Libby. I see in you the soul of a rural poet, a southern Henry Longfellow, perchance, awaiting its redemption from the depths of darkness to burst forth brilliantly into the lights of literary skies. You see all them things in me? Oh, yes. <sighs> Gee, Wellickers. Be careful. Oh, be careful. You hurt somebody. Oh, they my dishes. I won't peel any more potatoes. I won't. I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Shot again. Daddy, Daddy, save me! I, I can't breathe! I'll die! She can't breathe while she sure can holler. The child suffers from asthma, Miss Annie. The doctor the says. doctors? What do they know about kids anyway? Now, look, Miss Annie. Now, they... Mr. Cartwright, I might not be too smart about a lot of things, but I was a child once myself, and I know a sure fire cure for that little hellion. Kentucky style cure, that is. Well, Hoss, stop gaping. Pick up that child, take it upstairs to the bedroom. And as for you, you just stay put. Well, this I... is woman's work. Glory be. Ooh, she's quite a woman. She ain't no wailing banshee. No, she <laughs> ain't. I have to set it right over here on this bed. Yes, sir. And I'm going to need some red flannel. And, uh... Show me where the medicine is kept. Yeah. I got. I'll take care oh, of it. Ma'am, the medicine's over there under that wash basin. Oh, the, the only flannel I got's over there in them, in them drawers in the dresser. Cool. Right, well, I'll get it. Don't I'm just stand not. there. You're in the way. Yes. Get out. Now right, you sit still here. You're gonna. You're gonna have an attack. Oh. Let's go right ahead. I hate you. I hate you. Let me go. Let me go. Boy, Paul. That Kentucky gal is sure determined. Yeah, yeah. So is Jenny. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, 
I wonder if you'd care to accompany me upstairs for a peep at the proceedings. Uh, you, uh, you a little scared of Annie? Well, now, it ain't Annie and it ain't Jenny, but the two of them makes a mighty earthquake. <laughs> She's murdered me, poor child. Glory be. Well, come in, Mr. McGillicuddy. Are you all right, Jenny, darling? Now, why shouldn't she be all right? Since when has a warm bed and a good rub down done a child any harm? Mm -hmm. What this child needs is love. A mother's love. I've been given that very idea a bit of serious consideration of late. <laughs> well, have you now, Mr. McGillicuddy? Well, things have sure simmered down upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. Hey, take a look at this. And hey, where'd you find this? Found it on the bunkhouse door. A horse, listen to this. Dear horse, little Joe, and Mr. Cartwright, please forgive us for going like this, but it could not be helped. Jed and Ned need us more than Hoss ever will, and we've discovered we need them. Please don't worry about your double-seated buckboard, as we shall return it after the wedding. Your friends forever. Yvette and Libby. <laughs> oh, hey, boy, I'm, I'm a free man. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, come here. There's more. <laughs> we all hope Annie and Horse will be very, very happy. <laughs> well, Rome wasn't built in a day. It ain't Rome I'm worried about, it's me. Gentlemen, <clears throat> I'm sure we're all agreed that motherhood is an indispensable and noble role. Don't make a speech, just tell him. Yes, uh, Mr. Cartwright, horse, every child, like my little dear Jenny, needs a mother. Yes, yes, a proper mother. Exactly, sir. Someone who would love and cherish her as, as you do. Um, my very own thoughts, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking of... Actually, Annie and, and Horse could learn to love and cherish Jenny. Uh, that is, if she's, uh, if she's up for adoption. Adopt? Yeah. Well, uh, that's not exactly what I had in view now. Uh, of course, certainly, Horse is... Well, he's a, he's a fetching and a fascinating fella. Muscular, handsome, and quite a brain, too, I might say. But I, I've never dared hope to... What he's trying to say is that, uh, I can't marry Horse. You can't? You can't marry Horse? Nope. No, because, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna marry him. You see, this, this funny little Irish fella, he, uh, well, he really needs me. And, well, so does that sweet little Jenny. So, uh, well, you understand, don't you, Hoss? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Miss Annie, it ain't gonna be easy. Doggone it, the best man won, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Horst. Congratulations, my goodness, yes. And my very best like wishes to you. We're going to have a wedding at the Ponderosa after all. That bird, right? I'm going to give the bride's away. <laughs> all of them. Well, that's good. Snuckin'.
check and mate. <laughs> well, that's two games for you and one for me. Here's mail, Paul. Thank you. There's one here for you, Your Majesty. Ah, from George Harris. One of my most loyal and faithful subjects. Hey, Paul. Did he really beat you two games? Yes, he beat me two games. What about it? Nothing, Paul. I lost the ice appeal. The fools! Don't they know this was their last chance? Now I am forced to seize the judiciary and reverse the decision myself. I had hoped I wouldn't have to do that. He's taking it pretty hard. He's human. I suppose any man will break if enough pressure's brought to bear. Fifteen years ago, that man was one of the wealthiest and most influential merchants in the city of San Francisco. Then he lost everything. Some venture involving the shipment of rice from the Orient. He was wiped out financially and in other ways, too. So now, now he's the emperor. And no one can ever cheat him again. A right. thing like that happened to a man, it hurt pretty fiercely, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, there's a part of him that's hurt. The part that pretends he's an emperor. But the part that plays brilliant chess and writes searching essays in political science and makes courageous speeches in the gallery at the state legislature. I sure wish I was as healthy as that part. Does he really do all that? You bet he does. The alarm was off on the mine. It's be an accident. <coughs> Get the water, can't you? Right. <coughs> Here you go. I think his left leg is broken. Your Majesty! Your Majesty! What's the matter? Oh. Are you lost? No, sir, but you are. Who owns this mine? Come on, Emperor, we gotta get out of here. I demand to know. Oh, Harry Crawford, why? I want him arrested at once. Arrested? For what? He didn't use the canaries. Oh. Then, who's in charge of this operation? Hmm? Mr. Milner here. It's the engineer. You? Well, for the canaries. The what, sir? The canaries! They would have warned the men in time. I'm arresting your employer for criminal negligence. Canaries? Then you sure he's harmless? Well, of course he's harmless. Young man, you better read up on canaries. Your Majesty. Uh, what, what was all that stuff about the canaries? You have one? I'll show you. Uh, Probably get one in town. Then get it, pronto. That's a command. Huh? Canaries. That's what I ask him. Ben, this is ridiculous. What are we trying to prove? Shh. His head is beginning to dope. The gas starts here. 
I've already checked in here. I didn't find any gas leak. You better check some more. By golly, he's right. I do smell it. Very faint. But not so faint down there where the men were working. It would accumulate down lower. How did you know it was here? The canary knew. Come, little friend, out in the open, and I'll reward you with a fresh worm. Canaries don't eat worms. Would you like to make a bet that one does? No, I don't think I would. Thank you, Hopsing. May I remove honorable play? No, no, no. Hopsing, I mentioned you this before. Gentlemen, rise. Rise. Kneel, please. Hopsing. Your conduct in caring for your injured countrymen after the mine explosion was exemplary. Therefore, in the name of the United States and Mexico, I hereby appoint you ambassador to China and representative of the court of Norton I in all matters pertaining to Oriental affairs. You may rise, Mr. Ambassador. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wait till I tell elders in Tong. Oh, oh, I'm seeing ambassador. Oh. Man, there ain't gonna be no living with him now. Gentlemen, be seated. Well, you did a very lovely thing for him, Ned. <laughs> well, of course. I bestowed a great honor on him, as I have on you, Mr. Miller by allowing you to install the first measures of safety in your mind before I arrest Mr. Crawford. I meant to thank you for giving him another chance, Your Majesty. I'll give him until tomorrow at four o'clock precisely to comply with my order. And now, there's something I wish to show you. Gentlemen, come this way. Gentlemen, behold my latest project, the newest wonder of the world. Well? What, what is it? What is it? It's a bridge! A bridge, a bridge! Well, no disrespect, sir, but if it's a bridge, what holds it up? Those cables! What else? I thought you were an engineer. Well, uh, struggling for a comprehension as I am, sir, uh, I... Well, if you could explain it a little more fully... The load divides between these clusters of cables so that none of them is sorely stressed. It's an ancient principle known by the Incas of Peru and the tribes of Equatorial Africa. Uh, how long is this bridge supposed to be? Not very long. Just across the Golden Gate of San Francisco. But that's more than a mile across some of the swiftest currents in the world. I'm aware of it. I was right about the canaries, wasn't I? Don't you believe in me yet? Well, of course we do, Your Majesty. It's just that, you know, a new idea always has certain resistance, like Leonardo da Vinci. Ah, comparisons are odious. I am a builder of bridges. I beg your pardon, Your Majesty. It's not your fault. The genius is lonely. There's an old adage which says, it's better to be lonely by oneself than to be lonely with friends. 
You're not lonely here, Your Majesty. No, sir, not at all, not. I think it's a fine bridge, too. You're not just saying that because I'm your emperor and you think you have to. No, not at all. I mean it. Oh, um, me too, Your Majesty. Of course. One day, I will build this great bridge across the Golden Gate. you for murder. You what? I said you are under arrest for murder. Oh, no. You're that old coot staying out in the Cartwright place. That canary business again. Will you get out of here before I put you away? Let go of me. I just... How dare you? I will not be subjected to this ridicule and hideous girl. Let Get this madman off of me. I won't stand it another minute. Lock him up for assault. Lock him up, Sheriff. On what charge? A man died because he was too cheap to buy a canary. A canary? I command his arrest. And well, you, this... You command his arrest? Just a moment. My cape. <laughs> I want to send a telegram to the sheriff's office in San Francisco. Good evening, Your Majesty. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Good evening, Your Majesty. Good evening. Gentlemen, good night. This has been an eventful day. It certainly has that. Good night, Your Majesty. Good night. Roy, thank you so much for bringing him Don't home. mention it, Ben. Have you got a minute? Sure. Harry Crawford is just about fit to be tied. Hmm? He started circulating a petition in town to get Mr. Norton committed. Well, that's unfair. You know that. Maybe I do know it, Ben. But there ain't going to be nothing that I can do about it if he gets enough signatures to order a sanity hearing. He's already wired San Francisco to get the information. <sighs> now Crawford will find out about the commitment order there. That's right. I figured you ought to know. I kind of like the old gent myself. Thanks for telling me, Roy. All right. Good night, Ben. Who is it, please? Your Emperor. Oh, yes, Your Majesty. It is an honor you visit me. Please come in. I have no time for idle socializing. Hopsing, I've been examining the situation here, and I've come to the conclusion that it is desperate. Here, on Ponderosa, this whole area, Hopsing, it needs the kind of guidance, direction, leadership that only I can provide. Hopsing, when I first mentioned the bridge I had envisioned, you said you would build it to China if I asked. Oh, but you not ask. Unfortunately, other matters demand my attention, such as Mr. Crawford, the owner of the mine. Now, I ask, Mr. Ambassador, I need someone to supervise construction of a prototype. But I work for Mr. Cartwright, Your Majesty. You worked for Mr. Cartwright. You are now in the service of your emperor. Hey, Paul. Paul? Morning, Ben. Morning. Boss. Morning. Morning, Your Majesty. Well, how do you like it?
You mean, uh, this is what you've been doing the last three days? I've been working on this all my life. Beautiful. Beautiful. Too. Oh. What color do you think it should be? I've been debating between yellow and red. Red would be more striking. But I'm afraid it would get lost against the sunset. Yeah, it looked pretty small against the sunset, all right. <laughs> oh, sir. His Majesty is not referring to this little bridge. He's referring to the real thing, the one that's going across the Golden Gate at San Francisco. Oh, 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 that bridge. Um, Your Majesty, do you happen to know where Hop Singh might be? I do, but I can't tell you. It's a state secret, Ben. Yeah, but Hop Singh, he ain't, he ain't been I cooking. Hoss, hoss. It's a state secret. Well, maybe Hop Singh's whereabouts is a state secret, but it's making headline news down here in my stomach. Norton been doing with my Chinese workers? <laughs> well, Mr. Cropper, what has Emperor Norton been doing with your workers? <laughs> I am serious, Mr. Cartwright. He and Hop Singh came round three days ago, and ever since my Chinese workers have been leaving the mines during the lunch hour. Well, it seems to me that what your workers do during the lunch hour is their business. It's my business when they don't eat and just drag through the rest of the afternoon. I'm not getting a full day's work out of them. So that's why you've been pushing that petition so hard. That's one reason, of course. Now, see here, Mr. Cartwright. There's no malice in me. You get that old nuisance to leave my workers alone, and I'll withdraw that petition. All right, so you'd better ask Norton, not me. I thought you were interested in his welfare. I see I was mistaken. Well... I'm glad you brought it in, Ben. Because if I had never seen it, I never would have believed it. The bridge can be built. I don't know. Well, it's just right there, right in front of you. There's a model in front of me. I mean, I, I can make a model of a, a building 50 stories high. But that doesn't mean that that building can actually be constructed. I mean, for all I know, that uh, bridge couldn't even carry its own weight. Well, is that what you're telling me? Ben, this man is a, is a mixture of genius and delusion. He set forth a theory that is totally new to any engineering I've ever studied. I simply don't know whether that bridge could stand or not. Well, you, you must have some idea. Ben, don't ask me for an answer. I don't even fully understand the question. That's one thing I do understand, though. Norton's uh, oddities are pushing a lot of people into signing that petition. It's Crawford that's doing the pushing. But it's the Emperor that's giving him a lot of ammunition. Just because he wants to build a different kind of bridge. Norton's bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. Norton's bridge is falling down, poor old crackpot. Norton's bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. Norton's bridge is falling down, poor old crackpot. Why are you singing that song, boy? I was just playing a joke. Everybody's laughing at that old coot. Let me go, will ya? Let go of me. You know, I'm worried about you. You ought to take better care of yourself. I want to show you something. Now look, look back your pants here. Look back here. See all that dust back here? So clean it off for you. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I saw what you did to that poor child, and I think it's dreadful. Well, ma'am, I don't think it's any more dreadful than poking fun at your elders in the street. 
That Emperor, Norton, don't you agree with Mr. Crawford's petition? I most assuredly do not, ma'am. Well, let me remind you, sir, that the Bible says, suffer the little children who come unto me. Well, ma'am, let me tell you that the next little child that comes unto me singing that song most assuredly will suffer. Goodbye. <laughs> Go me in, Tom. Supper's just about ready, Your Majesty. I'm really not hungry, Ben. But you go on. You feeling all right? I'm fine. Well, maybe you'll feel like eating a little later. Ben, they still mock me in Virginia City, don't they? Well, some of them, yes. Most of them. Be honest. It's one thing to be tolerated, Ben. To be loved, even. But it's quite another thing to be taken seriously. I'm an emperor. I've got to leave a legacy. Even if it's only a little wooden bridge across a muddy creek. Hey, Pa. Sheriff Coffee's here. And he's got Mr. Crawford with him. Ben, I, I'm sorry it had to come to this. I think I'm a reasonable man, Mr. Cartwright. I will try once more. There's no need to rise, Sheriff. This is an informal audience. Now, see here, Norton. Excuse me, sir. I think you'll get along much better if you address His Majesty by his proper title. Now, see here, Your Majesty. You are in no position to bargain. <laughs> then why are you trying to bargain with me? I am not trying to bargain with you. I just don't want to see you suffer needlessly in confinement. My good man, you're not making any sense. I don't know what you're talking about. You know perfectly well what I'm talking about. I am talking about that petition for your sanity hearing, Your Majesty. Sheriff, are you involved in this disgraceful coup d'etat? Come on now, Norton. Let's not make it any harder than it has to be. The law is on my side and you know it. I'm afraid he is right, Your Majesty. Gentlemen, do you intend to stand aside while your emperor is being subjected to this humiliation? But, Roy, just because a man thinks he's something he ain't, don't necessarily make him strange. I mean, we've all done it, ain't we? You're wrong, Hoss. I am what I believe myself to be. We all are. Oh, this farce has gone on long enough. Sheriff, do your duty. Well, uh... You'll be cleared of all charges, I'm, I'm certain, Your Majesty. I wonder, Ben. A man's mind is a complicated mechanism. Who is qualified to determine the absolute rightness of its balance? Oh, Your Majesty, we all know you are supreme. No, Mr. Crawford, I'm not. Only God is supreme. But there's no need to quarrel over me, gentlemen. I'd always intended to inspect your town's prison facilities anyway. <laughs> and my hat. Mr. Crawford, I've often thought of granting my subjects the right of self-rule. But when I meet someone like you, 
Well, I realize the nation still needs my guiding hand. Sheriff, your emperor does not like to be kept waiting. Come along, Sheriff. I don't like to be kept waiting either. I'll be down tomorrow to post bail. All right, Ben. Ben, I will. I'll try to make him as comfortable as possible. Ben, you can pick up a receipt for your bail money on the way out, huh? Morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Ben. Uh, I'm also an expert locksmith. Sheriff, it's fine, strong and well-built. I'm also pleased to note you provided for ample sunshine and fresh air. Remind me to double your salary. Thank you very much, Your Highness. Ben, uh, Sheriff... Ben and I have some things to talk over. Wait outside. Yes, sir. You solemnly swear to obey the duties of your new office as Minister of Justice? As, as Minister of Justice? It's not necessary to repeat after me. Answer yes or no. Well, uh, Your Majesty, what, what, will, what will my new duties be? Defending your emperor at the impeachment. At the impeachment? Your Majesty, you, you need a proper lawyer. Are you questioning the wisdom of your emperor? What? Remember, you once took an oath to obey and serve your emperor. Oh, yes. Are you going back on your word? Well, no, no, no not, not exactly. When a man says not exactly, he means exactly. Then, for your own good, I have to place you under arrest. Uh, 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 your Majesty, I solemnly swear to, to carry out all the duties as Minister of Justice. I think you do. Congratulations, Ben. Thank you, Majesty. Get my cape and hat. Yes, Your Majesty. Ben. Excuse me. Little Joe, Your Majesty. Emperor, do you know what happened to the Chinese at the mine? I know they're industrious, hard-working people who have always been loyal to every command that I have given. I mean, sir, do you know why about half of them didn't show up for work today? Half of them? Do you know anything about this? It's a state secret, Ben. Your Majesty, there's no such thing as a state secret between a minister of justice... A what? A minister of justice and his emperor. You've got to tell me what this is all about. And I shall. At the proper time. Drive on, uh, uh, Your Majesty, one more thing. I I'd like to send a wire to Mr. Clemens and uh, some of the other friends. Have them testify? Excellent thought, Ben. I knew you'd show initiative in your new post. Drive on, Joseph. Come on. Who is this Clemens, Ben? Oh, Samuel Clemens. Mark Twain? Yeah, Mark Twain. <laughs> you might know some of the others, too. Red Hart and Robert Louis Stevenson. You mean they're friends of Norton's? Yeah, friends and admirers. This hearing is convened. Now, we're to consider the petition for the commitment of Joshua Norton for insanity. It is noted that Mr. Crawford, who circulated the petition, has the prescribed number of signatures of interested citizens. Now, will the defense identify itself, please? Uh, Your Honor, His Majesty has consented to allow me to defend him. All right, Ben. I'll conduct the inquiry, since this is a sanity hearing, not a trial. Nevertheless, Your Honor, His Majesty stands accused, and the Constitution guarantees him the right to face his accusers. I would like history to remember just who his accusers are. Crawford and the 
people who signed the petition. History will be interested in the names, I'm sure. The defense has no witnesses to call at this time, Your Honor. Mr. Crawford, what do you have to say? Don't worry, Ben. They'll be here. I sure hope so. That testimony is vital. Vital? No, Ben, not vital. They're important, I grant you. But only the model of my bridge is vital. All right, Mr. Crawford, let's have it. Well, Your Honor, the long and short of it is this. This man, Norton, came to town dressed in those ridiculous clothes and told everybody that he was the emperor of the United States and the something or other of Mexico. Protector. I'm the protector of Mexico. Well, the protector of Mexico started making trouble in Virginia City. He should be put away, and that's all there is to it. Ever since this emperor came to town, is there a man here who has been able to get one of his Chinese workers to so much as carry a message during the noon hour? No, sir. He is responsible for that. Furthermore, he has stirred up all the Indians to demand higher wages. Oh, yes, and here's one more little thing. And here's one more thing. He has publicly advocated that women be given the right to vote. Now, gentlemen, you know and I know what chaos that could produce. There is not one person in this town, man, woman, or child, who has not been adversely affected by his presence. He is a menace to the community, and we demand that he be removed. Yeah. 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 you have anything more, Mr. Crawford? No, sir. Your Honor. All right, Ben. Mr. Crawford, you say that Emperor Norton behaved in an outlandish manner. Yes, sir, he did. Well, uh, what exactly did he do? I mean, did he do things like, uh, well, something like this, like uh, come to you and say that he owned your land and... He was going to give it away to somebody else? That is exactly the sort of thing he did. In other words, he behaved exactly like Christopher Columbus did. Well, isn't that true? Just think of it. Christopher Columbus, dressed in a ridiculous manner, if you happen to be an Indian, and Christopher Columbus decided he was going to give away the land he had just discovered to some king or other in Europe, and that must have seemed pretty strange if you happened to be an Indian and thought all along that the land you were living on was yours and had been for a long time. In fact, I think we're all pretty fortunate Mr. Corbett wasn't around to lock Christopher Columbus up. <laughs> and your point doesn't apply here. You know it doesn't. Your Honor, I know that the only reason he's circulating this petition he said that he won't have to invest any money in safety devices for his mine. I am protecting my miners, but not with canary birds. <laughs> All right, Mr. Miller, let's hear about the bridge. <clears throat> well, frankly, Your Honor, uh, there's not a whole lot I can tell you. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the model here. Uh, doesn't prove anything except that a model can be built in order to prove this theory of Emperor Norton's. Mr. Norton. Emperor Norton. Now, you'd have to have an actual bridge, a real bridge, so that you could subject it to experimental stresses. Chris, did Emperor Norton ever mention the vine bridges across the Amazon River to you? Well, yes, he did mention them, but I only have his word for it. Oh. And uh, he's disturbed. Now, suppose I were to tell you that I'd read about those vine bridges, too. Am I disturbed? I don't think so, Ben. Well, uh... <laughs> whose word do you have for that? Only yours. No more questions. You may step down, Mr. Milner.
Your Honor. Uh, sir, may I request a short recess? What for, Ben? If I may beg your indulgence, sir, uh, I think the need for the recess will be apparent. All right. Five minutes. Mark! Well, 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 how good to see you. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my Minister of Justice. Ben. Well, Sam, it's nice to see you again. We've known each other for some time, Your Majesty. Uh, ben, I uh, brought these letters from oh, the others. Yes. Stevenson, Bret Hart, Fremont, General Vallejo. Oh. I uh, hope they'll be of some value. I know they will be. It's a very impressive list. He's a uh, very impressive man. Yes, he is. Your Majesty, I think we'd better get back. Let's get together for dinner, say, as soon as this foolishness is over. Missed you. Well. How's it really going in there? Well, now that you're here, Sam, I think everything will be all right. We'll call you just as soon as we get back in. Fine. Fine. Are we ready to go now, Ben? Yes, we are, Your Honor, and thank you for your indulgence. Your Honor, with your permission, we would like to call a character witness who's come a long way to help an old friend. Who is he, Ben? May I introduce Mr. Samuel Clemens. Mr. Clemens, pleasure to have you in our courtroom. Thank you, Your Honor. Won't you uh, take the stand? Just one minute, Your Honor. He can't testify here. If he was a doctor, I'd say, fine, go ahead, let's hear him. But he's not. He's just a friend. I beg your pardon. He's more than just a friend, Mr. Crawford. This man is a celebrated American author. He's, he's I don't care. He is. I, I, I don't care. He's got a letter from the king. I'll testify. Joshua. I solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. State your name, please. And my titles? Yes, and your titles. I'm Emperor Joshua Norton, Emperor of the United States of America, Protector of Mexico, the sole unchallenged sovereign of the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> This is a prima facie case. I don't want to humiliate the man anymore. Joshua Norton, I have heard all the evidence relating to your state of mind and your ability to fend for yourself. I find that your best interest will be served if you were to be committed. This bridge model shows how wrong they are. Mr. Milner is absolutely wrong, and so is Mr. Crawford. Mr. Milner, not Your the Majesty, same. Excuse me, sir. You better, you better have some cover. This hearing will recess for one hour. We will reconvene at Bowes Creek on the Ponderosa. Adjourn. Your Majesty, why didn't you tell me what was going on at Bowes Creek before? State seeker between my ambassador and me. All right, this hearing's back in session. Well, what further proof do you need, Judge? There it is. Mr. Melner, what do you think of that? Depends on how much weight it'll carry, Judge. 
Hop Singh and his workers w who went over it. Oh, Hop Singh don't weigh 150 pounds sopping wet after a full dinner. That's no test. How about me? Would I be tough enough for you? My dear sir, if you want to soak in, that's up to you. Then, if I've been wrong in this, I will have been wrong in everything. It will work, won't it? It's got to work. Congratulations, Your Majesty. They build a bridge. So what if he did? It doesn't go any place. Oh, you're wrong, Crawford. That's the longest bridge in the world. It goes from here all the way into the future. <laughs> <laughs> 